So where are we actually cruising to at the moment? So we are on Takadu Private Game Reserve and we are going to the Sea Al Wilcott Vulture Restaurant. Fantastic. And what are we going to do at the Vulture Restaurant? So we are going to feed some vultures and hopefully learn more about these incredible animals. That sounds like a great idea. Cheers. So hopefully we can see some other game. Kudu, Eland, Giraffe. Zebra, Wildebeest, Warthog, so keep your eyes open. So this is this is the feeding ground, as you can see there are carcasses lying on the ground. Vultures leaving the parting. I don't have to touch that. I can't. So usually we have big buckets of intestines, but they didn't slaughter today. So and my snacky. Axel is taking binkies out for him. Don't you feel a little bit? So how much of this carcass will they actually continue eating? Not much, as you can see it's like hollow, so oh. they don't like the hide, it gets tough very of course. but they get inside and eat everything. Welcome, anything from 50 to 300, just wow. depends. Let the marabou's come eat first. Where do you get um, these carcasses from? Okay, so there's a feed lot just outside of Hanzi, and they have between seven and eight thousand heads of cattle. Obviously, they've got some fatalities, but due to their ERA, they can't bury all of it. So we've created a partnership with them where we actually go and collect the carcasses, bring them here, they get eaten, and then. We do a clean up once a month and then we burn all the ashes, oh, the bones and the hides and we rework the ashes back into the vegetable garden and because the ashes are rich in nutrients and then it's a 100% recycle process. And how long does this feeding frenzy actually uh, continue on for? Well, it depends how many vultures there are. They can eat up to two kgs of meat in one go. So, because it's bones, they'll kind of hang around and just nibble a bit. Bones are also good for calcium. It's nesting season between May and October. So they actually pick up little fragments of bone and take it back to the nest as an extra source of calcium for the chicks. And which um, vultures do you have around these parts? So mainly white-backed and the lapid-faced vulture, but we do occasionally get white-headed and cape vultures. And then there's lots of marabou stalks. And now they also know that there's food here. So, so they're going to call all their friends now. Go and pass all. all right. There's already some scouting. Okay, so we started this project in 2012 and um, did a lot of research. Vulture restaurants originally started in the 1960s in South Africa because of urbanization, there's loss of habitat. Botswana is a bit different because there's lots of habitat, but um, it's a good thing to have an alternative safe food source and to educate people. So we've started out by putting a wildebeest carcass in an open pan and nothing came down for three months. <laughs> You're absolutely devastated. Absolutely. But we just carried on and after seven months, three came and then we just continued to put stuff out and eventually they all came down. 
And then we raised a lot of money by cycling and then we've built this hide. That's amazing. Let's go check out the hide. Cool. So we're approaching the C.L. Wolcott Vulture Restaurant Hide, uh, which they built. Um, I'm just going to go in here and see what today's feed brings. Um, see the adventure cruise already here. And, and Jangle, of course. Picked her up on the side of the road. <laughs> As you can see, we are waiting for these vultures to actually realize that there is some delicious food on the ground for them to come and eat. They'll start circling soon. Yeah, we'll watch the feeding frenzy at the Vulture restaurant. So these solar panels and those those solar geysers obviously run the water here and these solar panels provide the power. Yes, the, the geysers run on their own panels and they, these ones are only for the TV and the charge station. The fruit runs on its own panel um, and then we also have a donkey just in case. Of course, always got to have a donkey. Okay, so... Botswana was supposed to ban single-use plastics on the 1st of November last year. Then they kept on postponing, but we decided to do something about it anyway. So we're also making shopping bags out of old Shadenate and Hessian. Unfortunately, I don't have any Hessian in stock at the moment. But So, so what is Botswana doing about single-use plastic? At this stage, nothing. There's no recycling in Botswana, so we're trying to get that going. And the big problem apparently is that some of the plastic gets manufactured in Botswana, so it's a money thing. But yeah, by so keeping them it's full on circle. applying pressure will hopefully result in something good. I guess as long as some people are applying pressure um, in these areas, um, will hopefully push them into a corner where they'll have to start mm -hmm. making changes. But I guess it's people like you and your teams here that... Um, are instead of recycling you're upcycling and that's a start mm. um yeah that's amazing this space is amazing it is i definitely definitely recommend people look you up on the web vet web and um and do you want to give us those links so you can go and look at www.takadibushcamp.com Takadi is T-H-A-K-A-D-U <laughs> It means Art Park in Setswana Or you can just check out on Facebook Camp Folly or the C.L. Wilcott Vulture Restaurant Now you got it And the Women's Collective Botswana And soon to have a coffee shop in Khanzi Or Lambia right. Trading there we go.